So I'm Jonathan Siegel. I'm a neonatologist at Wake Med Hospital in Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm also the medical director of the Wake Med Mother's Milk Bank, which is here in Raleigh. My name is Kellyanne O'Mara. I'm a neonatal a clinical pharmacy specialist. I have been practicing for about 12 years and most recently joined the team um, with Dr. Siegel at Wake Med Health and Hospitals in Raleigh, North Carolina. Today we'll be talking about the NFET uh, enteral system and the accuracy of drug administration using the system. Since 2018, the implementation of a safety enteral feeding system has been highly recommended. However, in most neonatal units, most of the drugs are administered through feeding tubes. Is accuracy a concern? Accuracy is absolutely a concern when we're talking about enteral medications. And I think we most commonly think about the safety of intravenous medications, and there's a lot more regulations that are centered around that route of administration. When we're talking about accuracy, it's important to know what should be considered an acceptable dosing variance when we go above which or below which we need to be concerned about unintended adverse effects or potentially therapeutic failures. There is no recognized standard for acceptable dosing variance in any population, but in general, in pediatrics, um, most clinicians will accept plus or minus 10%. And this really um, applies mostly to medications where we have a fairly safe safety profile. If we're getting into narrow therapeutic index medications or those where the risk of treatment failure or treatment overdose are exceptionally high, this plus or minus variance goes down to about 5%. We often think well, they're just enteral medications. How harmful can it be if we get a little more or a little less? Um, and there are several medications that we give in the neonatal population that have a high risk for potential of either toxicity or potentially treatment failures. I have a couple of these listed for you here on the slide. And um, it's important to look at what these dosing volumes um, look like as well as we're talking about the safety of the smaller syringes within the infant system. So on the slide, we have several seizure medications like phenobarb and phenytoin and clonazepam, um, other drugs like morphine and methadone. We know that at least in the United States, the opioid epidemic continues to rage on and cause havoc in these children who require treatment. Um, something like morphine is given up to eight times a day, methadone anywhere from generally four to two times a day. And these drugs are at very small doses. And if given too much or too little, you run the risk of the baby either having breakthrough symptoms such as seizures and other severe side effects of withdrawal or potentially over dosages, which can cause respiratory depression um, and potentially catastrophic outcomes from that. Uh, moving down the list, we have some of our cardiac meds like digoxin and enalapril, where if given too much can cause serious toxicity. And then drugs like our HIV meds when we're trying to prevent um, transmission to baby where potentially underdosing could lead to transmission of virus and the baby developing HIV. It's very difficult to monitor for dosing and accuracy in the neonatal population because these babies are nonverbal and they can't tell you when they feel bad. Um, oftentimes with signs of toxicity or underdosages, as with everything else in neonatology, the symptoms may be fairly subtle and we may not be able to pick up on them until um, the additive effect is quite severe. In medications where we have the ability of serum concentrations to monitor uh, the levels, this is certainly helpful, but it often can lead to unnecessary blood draws and painful procedures in a population that already undergoes many painful procedures as part of their routine care. Additionally, not all medications have a laboratory assessment, and so we run the risk um, of not having any potential way to tell that the dosages have been given incorrectly. Another important point that I want to make is that um, the application of the infant design doesn't just impact the inpatient population, but also the small babies that go home in the outpatient world. And so when we're looking at the you know, well-trained nurse or physician or pharmacist who's able to maybe help pick up on some of these subtle symptoms, this may not be the same when we're talking about a first-time parent who's taken their baby home and doesn't understand the full risk benefit um, profile of the medications and what toxicity or underdosages could look like. We heard that there's a universal safety system called NFIT that exists on the market. Does this meet the safety and accuracy challenges for neonatal patients? 
And a simple answer, we know that no, it does not. So the original data for the standard female syringe that was one ml found nearly a 25 to 30% over and under dosage potential with its use. Um, this study looked specifically at the one ml syringes. So we don't have the performance data for the other lower dose syringes. And that's an important critique of the information available to us. Um, it also did not um, evaluate the dispensing adapters, which we'll get into a little bit later. When we look at the spread of how inaccurate these syringes are, um, we can see again that it's ranging from about minus 30% to upwards of some tests falling into 45% overdosages. And so it's really, really important for us to make sure that we know that the standard infit syringe has a high level of potential for inaccurate dosing. And this is really framed around the tip. And so the picture of this is, is um, provided for you here on the right. The standard infit tip contains 0.2 mLs of drug, and when used incorrectly, can either overdose by 0.2 mLs or potentially underdose by 0.2 mLs. This becomes important for any of our doses that are anywhere from 0.1 to 2 mLs, um, where we know that that's going to provide more than plus or minus 10% dosing variance with each dose. When we're looking at the importance of enteral accuracy in neonates with our dosing volumes, um, returning back to that same table, we can see that there are many of these medications that are going to be less than two mLs. And so many of our important medications that have high risk for toxicity or treatment failure are falling within this at-risk group. And this spread um, on the right side shows what the potential under or over dosages would be, which are all clinically significant and relevant to our population. But I've also heard that there's a low-dose tip syringe that's been created to solve this problem. So it's not an issue anymore, right? Great question. So we know that the infant low-dose tip basically took the original design and inserted a male lumen inside of it. And so it does help take away some of the extra uh, volume that may be displaced. So remembering again that our standard syringe can displace up to 0.2 mLs of volume, um, this one actually can displace up to 0.12 mLs. So while this is a reduction, it doesn't completely solve the problem. When we're looking at what this looks like in clinical evaluation, I have the results from one of the papers that I've published listed for you here. And we can see the male legacy syringe on the left versus the infant low-dose tip syringe on the right. And while if we were just looking at the mean dosing variance, we would think that this cleanly fits into our goal of plus or minus 10%, we can see that the range is much wider with the infant low-dose tip. And so this really becomes problematic when we are thinking about the percentage of tests that are falling outside of an acceptable doses range. When we look at this a different way um, and look at it compared to what the original GEDSA study showed, we see that in my study, we found a much wider range that more closely emulates what we see with the standard infant syringe. And that this makes sense when we're talking about only removing about 0.08 mLs of what is being displaced and with the 0.12 mLs of potential um, still there. Looking at this by syringe size, because we know that the smallest syringes are potentially the most problematic. Um, we found significantly more tests within the infant low dose tip were outside of an acceptable range. So looking across the spectrum of low volume syringes of 0.5 to 3, it was overall around 26% or nearly a quarter of all tests. When we move over to the 0.5 ml syringes, we can see that nearly 40% of these are falling outside of a, an acceptable dosing variance range. And that number is about 26% for the 1 ml syringes. Um, this this holds true a uh, bit where the smaller syringes are associated with more dosing and accuracy, even with our male legacy, but you can see that that's still a much higher, much more significant proportion of the infant low dose tip resulted in inaccurate doses. So what specifications should a safety enteral system have for neonatal patients? Our enteral systems need to have accuracy first and foremost. We are delivering medications and these need to be accurate every single time. Above and beyond that, we also need process simplicity. And we'll get a little more into what this means over the next couple of slides. So when we're talking about accuracy, we have a couple of different options um, for the application of the standards that um, have been set forth for enteral devices. One of them, as we've already spoken about, is the infant low-dose tip. 
The other is the NutraSafe 2. So it's important to note that the NFIT is not your only option when you are looking at a device that meets enteral safety standards. When we compared out the NFIT low dose tip syringe to the NutraSafe 2, which is designed specifically for the neonatal population, we found a much more accurate um, profile with the NutraSafe 2. So the overall dosing variance for this device was around 3% versus around 12% for the NFIT low dose tip. And so it is important to know that we can deliver devices to neonates in a way that is safe as well as accurate. Looking across the different syringe sizes, so 0.51 and then the 2.5 and 3 mLs for the infant low dose tip and the NutraSafe 2, we found across the board the NutraSafe 2 performed better, had better dosing accuracy and fewer tests that were falling outside of our accepted range of plus or minus 10%. Spoken a little bit about adapters and what this means to the NFIT syringe profile. And you can see that where ordinarily adapters may relate to converting a syringe to a different type of system. In the case of the NFIT, um, we have dispensing adapters, which are recommended for use for drawing up medications out of medication cups or other bulk devices. And then we have oral adapters for the neonate, which includes manipulating the end of the syringe to make it safe to put into the baby's mouth for potential oral application of these devices. The infant low dose tip becomes much more complex for use if we're having to use both dispensing and oral adapters. And although it is not required to use these, the manufacturers have acknowledged the potential for dosing inaccuracy with the syringe itself and have recommended for use in this population to use the adapters to draw up the medications and to administer them. This leads to significant workflow burden when we're talking about extra steps and pieces for both nursing, pharmacy, and caregivers. This also is a potential error burden because we know that each step is a potential for mistakes. So each one that we add to this process is another chance of somebody making a mistake. Lastly, we have to always think about the financial burden. So each additional piece that's required to use these devices must be included in budget considerations. Lastly, I want to touch on cleaning protocols and the, requ the requirement for a cleaning protocol with the NFIT tubing system. You can see that based off the design, we are at high risk of developing debris around the inside of the tube. And so this has led to um, recommendations for how best to address this. What we do know with tubes that become contaminated is that biofilm can develop in as little as one day. We also know in studies that have been done in neonates with enteral tubes, pathogenic gram negatives are common um, and frequently become the, the bacteria that colonize these tubes. So each time we're accessing these tubes and putting in a, a feeding or putting on a medication, this is a potential bacterial bolus. Just briefly touching on one um, infant cleaning procedure study, they looked at a more diligent versus less diligent cleaning protocol. I just want to note that this is a nine or 17 step process. So with a neonate receiving feeds every three hours, if you need to clean that, that tube every three hours, this is an additional 72 to 130 steps each and every day for each baby. Um, so that really becomes profound when we're thinking about the, the burden to the nursing and bedside caregiver um, to use these tubes. So in conclusion, neonatal dosing accuracy matters, especially when we're talking about low volume doses. And because this population is at incredible risk for treatment toxicity or failures based off what seem like relatively small changes in dose. It's important as we're thinking through what infit or what enteral system to use that we define the needs of the end user and what those end users are. So nursing may have a very different need than what pharmacy does, who may also have a very different need of what the caregiver at home needs for their babies. And it's important for us to consider what is going to be safe and accurate. In general, looking at our enteral systems, we want something that delivers the same dose every single time. We want something that is simple to use because we know that as people get busy or distracted, mistakes can be made. We also want something that's clean and isn't going to provide extra risk to our patients who are already at such extreme risk for infections related to their hospitalization or their, their disease conditions. And so I just urge everyone as you're trying to decide which enteral system best meets the needs of you and your, your babies and your system, 
that you look at all the literature that's been published, you evaluate the data critically, and know that there are more options available to you than simply the infit system to provide a safe integral system that's also accurate for our patients.